Now, the Prime Minister announced today that uh, there'd be another inquiry into the unfolding nightmare at the Cooperative Bank. By our calculations, that takes the number to five. Inquiries of one sort or another are what you must expect when it turns out an avowedly ethical financial institution has been run into the ground by an apparently unqualified Methodist minister with decidedly unecclesiastical tastes. Because of the connections with Labour, the Prime Minister had a rather enjoyable Prime Minister's questions. The first priority is to safeguard this bank and to make sure that it's safeguarded without using taxpayers' money. That must be the priority. My right honourable friend, the Chancellor, will be discussing with the regulators what is the appropriate form of inquiry to get to the bottom of what went wrong here. Now, our reporter Andy Verity is uh, taking a close interest in this story and is here now. Um, how independent can this inquiry be? Well, it's a very good question, Jeremy, because the big question is really who's investigating who and whether anybody can maintain a safe, unembarrassing distance from any of the inquiries that are going on. The Treasury's initiating this latest inquiry, of course, but it's not clear they're at a comfortable distance and the Labour Party also has a few issues. There are two distinct issues about the co-op which are under the spotlight at the moment, of course. One is the appointment of Paul Flowers as the chairman of the co-op and how that happened, the role of the regulators, the role of politicians, the role of the bank itself. The other is how it ended up with a one and a half billion pound black hole at the same time as politicians and regulators were saying you should buy 631 branches of Lloyds. Now we've had a bit more on the Labour Party today. When we heard about the revelations about Paul Flowers uh, resigning from Bradford Council back in 2011, there was this question of whether he kept his membership of the Labour Party because he stayed as an advisor to Ed Miliband until March 2012. Now we heard earlier this week from the Labour Party that actually they just suspended his membership, that was their line. But we've spoken to the Chief Whip on Bradford City Council, Cher Khan, who says that actually it was his understanding that back in 2011, Paul Flowers resigned his membership of the Labour Party. It's embarrassing though for the Tories too, isn't it, a little bit? Yes, it is. Not so much on the issue of Paul Flowers' appointment, but more on the other issue, which is hold the co-op below the waterline, that one and a half billion pound black hole. Now that, of course, stemmed from a transaction, the buying of the Britannia Building Society. Uh, we know that uh, Ed Balls was drumming the, banging the drum for that when he was back at the Treasury. But it's also clear that the Treasury, in the coalition government, said as recently as October last year, that it was a transaction in the interests of co-op members and George Osborne can't claim not to have had an interest. We dug up a clip of George Osborne in July last year saying how good he thought the co-op's purchase of Lloyd's branches would be for the economy. Well, the British government has worked very hard to make this deal come about. And we've been on the phones over the recent months to try and get these Lloyd branches into the hands of the co-op because we want new names on the high street to deliver more choice for customers, to make sure we've got more banks out there offering good deals for people. So we're very happy with this deal and I think it's a good thing for the British economy. What about the uh, regulators? Are they investigating themselves? The short answer is yes. Uh, this inquiry is being arranged by the Prudential Regulation Authority. Now that's one of two bodies that was set up just at the end of last year. There's the consumer body, the Financial Conduct Authority, which is well, the British inquiry government has its worked own. very hard. And then there's also the Prudential Regulation Authority, which is in charge of ensuring that banks don't go bust so we all have to bail them out. Now the Prudential Regulation Authority, which is setting up this inquiry, is also full of people who were at the Financial Services Authority before when the transaction was being approved. Um, and Mark Tabor is a campaigner for those bondholders, pensioners who wanted income by buying bonds in the co-op, who stood to lose a lot of money. He's not sure the regulators are in a position to investigate themselves. Well, that, uh, well he's just disappeared, <laughs> but don't you worry about him. Um, of course, all these things are retrospective. They're all looking back, aren't they? Yes. And in the meantime, there are a lot of rather pressing issues going forward, aren't there? Yes, there are. Um, looking forward, we have to secure the recapitalisation. That's got to be the priority. 15,000 bondholders are hoping that the hedge funds who are putting money in aren't going to lose faith and going to stay with this transaction. They're bound to it. They should do. So that on the 11th of December, when the votes in favour of the recapitalisation go through, there will be money enough to keep the co-op alive. The ratings agencies have warned that obviously if that doesn't happen, 
The alternative may be nationalisation. We're not there yet. And if you've got less than 85 grand with a co-op, don't worry, the government's guaranteeing it. Eddie, thank you.